my name's Hannah, and I am a wife and caregiver to my husband, Josh. He um, spent 13 years in uh, Marine Special Operations. He was medically retired um, from MARSOC. Um, he was uh, severely injured in a parachuting accident that uh, he exited the plane and got tangled in his uh, line on his parachute and um, snapped his femur in half and it came thrashing out of his body and um, tore out you know majority of his other side of his body because when he came to land he tried to avoid landing on uh, his bone outside of his body so he was in really bad shape, um, and after that accident, um, our, that's when the intensive caregiving began. My story is a little bit different than Hannah's. I don't have an alive day that you hear different ways of, of injured veterans, and what, what we immediately think is someone's leg that's missing or an arm, and that wasn't the case for us. We didn't know that he had any mental health care issues at all, and well, <laughs> it wasn't diagnosed. I didn't know I was supposed to be an advocate. I didn't know he needed me there. And if there's one thing that you could all take away today, it would be that, that, they, that you, they need an advocate at those um, appointments because he was just suppressing all of his issues, his traumatic brain injury and all of that. His um, adrenaline of his position and his job kept him managing or coping for uh, eight years. I've seen so many soldiers go undiagnosed with one thing or another, like they've been in an explosion and they're diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury, but you know, they were never diagnosed with post-traumatic stress. And there's so many internal, I mean, injuries that you just don't see, that years later, they finally start coming out. You know, somebody starts having seizures five years later because they have frontal lobe damage that was never diagnosed. Do you want to share um, so, some of your story? So, my name is Liz Hunt, and um, I'm the caregiver to my husband. He retired, uh, medically retired, after 28 years with the Army. And, you know, the special operations mentality is like, you know, you get knocked out, you wake up, you get up, and you keep going. You don't go see a medic if you hit your head. Um, and, you know, and during those times, um, you know, it wasn't until not long ago that they were actually diagnosing post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injuries. So those are the things that I deal with now as a caregiver. It's empowering, too, being part of be, having that caregiver role because all of a sudden you're, you go from just being a wife who, you know, has got her own things going on and whatever to being an active part of, of helping them get better. You have a role and whatever better means. Um, our better is not going to be like working again better, but there's still quality of life that is, uh, you know, super important. I think it's a huge problem that there is a lot of caregivers out there that, um, well, a lot of you know uh, spouses out there that don't self-identify as a caregiver. I mean, you know, you could be doing something as simple as helping with medications, accompanying to appointments, you know, talking to the doctors. I mean, you know, on some level, you are a caregiver. Yeah, I'm very aware as his caregiver to um, just be so respectful to him and you know his his career and everything he's done because these veterans have done such superhuman, incredible amazing uh, things out there. And I'm just, you know, always careful that I, I want him to deliver that message to him, not in a nagging wife way. And um, there are times, you know, since he's been out that he has, you know, uh, hurt himself. We've been in the emergency room because he's just taken it too far. And, it, you know, it's that training that, you know, there's a mission, you're just going to complete it. And you're going to do it no matter it's what, like, regardless of anything. It's and like, our, yeah, it's like our job is to mitigate disaster. Yeah, basically pr you, you know, protect them so from So we don't have to care. <laughs> we don't, you know, we're caring some, for somebody with a bunch of issues, but we don't want to care for somebody with a bunch of issues. And then now they have a broken leg. Yeah. <laughs> so it's important for me to, um, be aware of everything he's doing during the day and seeing, um, you know, sit down, take a break. Like you've been at that for six hours, whatever it is he's doing. And it's like a, this loss of time, you know, and it's like, no, you need to stop. You're going to break yourself. There's 5.5 million caregivers caring for disabled veterans right now. 1.1 million of them are post 9-11 and under the age of 35. It's one of the reasons I started Ho'ola Farms was because that was therapy for me. 
being able to um, be around other families who understand and who aren't saying, oh, he looked fine at that party on Saturday, what's his problem? Or why isn't your husband ever with you anywhere? Or um, and, and being that caregiver and, and having that farm where we can commu communicate has, has uh, the, or the caregiver role has also empowered me to be healthier for myself because I realized you can't put the mask on somebody else before you put it on yourself or you'll pass out and then no one can help. And I was to that, I was a wheel and I was unhealthy and I was unhappy and once I identified, self-identified as a caregiver, um, and started getting some therapy and reaching out to others who were also um, in the same situation, it, it changed my life. I'll never be the same um, because of that. And I, I, so much of it is awareness about what you're already doing and then giving yourself a little bit of credit for getting to where you are right now.